it's my view that the kids are not eating as nutritious of foods as they possibly could. And given the agricultural strength of Oregon, it would be a natural fit that we could feed our own kids Oregon foods. The Farm to School program has been in statute now since 2008. And so it's the policy of the state that we're going to promote more local purchasing by schools for the feeding of our children uh, at lunch and breakfast, locally grown products. Problem is, we don't give them any money for this. So then their choice is pull from the classroom or other kinds of activities the school is doing in order to enhance the food menu, or use their federal dollars, which is largely a commodity system from mostly things not from Oregon, uh, where they can buy commodity beef through the school lunch bulk contracts and use the federal money they get for that. In 2009, we first attempted, because we got the program established but no funding, 2009 we first attempted to add a subsidy to each meal. So the feds already provide uh, every meal, they provide most of the money. Sometimes a school will add a little private money in, but the state does nothing, uh, unlike most states. Most states do give something. So in 2009, we attempted to add a subsidy per meal in. In this session, this bill would also attempt to add a subsidy per meal. Now, we're amending it from the way it reads currently on the um, series of tubes known as the Internet, and we are going to put in the uh, lunch as a pilot project with a fixed amount of money, roughly $2 million, instead of what we wanted, which was every lunch and every breakfast, not just a pilot project, but every kid, every school, which cost about $22 million. We asked for it to be taken from the lottery and the economic development fund um, that, that when we set up the lottery, we were asked as voters way back, do you want a lottery and you want it to be used for economic development? And they said yes. And then at some point we've now modified it to also include things like salmon restoration and parks and that kind of thing. But there's still the part that's unrestricted that's supposed to be for economic development. That's everyone thinks it was there, put there for. So in this process, when we have limited resources, just because something is new doesn't mean it isn't better than current economic development programs. So my argument is let's set up farm to school as an economic driver for agricultural producers with the side benefit of improving childhood health and lowering health care costs and improving better outcomes in school and the environmental benefit against any other economic development program that currently gets lottery money and see which is more uh, well received by the legislature and the public. Because my guess is helping family farmers feed fresh uh, foods to little kids is going to beat almost all of them. But that's the debate I'm trying to set up, and other people, I think, think of it as just a new program that doesn't need to be judged aside other current economic development programs. And I think if we could get that debate, we would win. It's certainly possible that under the definition of cut that some people use, um, they would have to be cut to get this. But I would even take some of the programs, hold them flat so they get literally the same amount of money as last time, and then... Uh, take that extra that was supposed to be for inflation that they are asking for, which inflation has not been very high, frankly, in the last few years, and give it to farm to school. And so then we can all agree that they didn't get cut. But if we have to work from a sheer zero-sum game, I think there are some programs that the tax break may be given to multinational corporations to leave their income in the foreign subsidiaries offshore rather than bringing it back to pay taxes. It's like $62 million dollars. In my view, that could go away, and we could do farm to school. And I think most people would agree with me. Improve the health of agriculture so it can be a viable business for the long term in Oregon because it's not only and we need food to eat, obviously, but it is a key driver in what most Oregonians enjoy about Oregon is its beauty and its natural characteristics, and that's largely because farmers and people who own timber can still run a business and have it look beautiful at the same time, is it's hard to ask someone to own the whole Willamette Valley as an aggregate and keep it looking green and nice and not a bunch of crappy houses like they have in California all over their farms when they can't make money. 
So they need to be able to make money. And for farms to be able to make money, they've got to have sales at a reasonable price. And when their tax dollars are what's being used to buy food every day, it drives the farmer crazy to know that one of their competitors from out of the country might be serving food in a school two miles from their farm and they can't get in there. And so I think it would help farmers and then certainly um, the aspect of feeding kids more nutritious food. And it's not just because I now have a three-year-old who loves berries and grapes and, you know, and she wants her watermelon every day. And uh, it's not just because I have one now. I wrote these laws before I had one. And I do think that helping our youngest, most vulnerable have a healthy, nutritious diet is going to um, help them learn more. And I think it's going to help deal with childhood obesity and a lot of problems that drive our healthcare system um, and their own health. And I, you know, I want kids to be able to be healthy.